In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with your spirit. My sisters, my brothers, hearty welcome to this Eucharist, to this sacrifice, when we immerse ourselves in Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. I invite you to recollect yourself as we begin. I want to welcome each one, the sisters, in your communities, the fathers, the brothers, and a very special affectionate welcome to the families all together at home as almost like a domestic church that, it, that tradition calls our Christian families. We begin this Eucharistic sacrifice today. But once again, let's pray for Christian families as we begin this week. Uh, it's so imp family life is so important. It's where we, where you fulfill yourself. It your same for the community, religious communities. It's in your community. I pray for your community also to be one harmonious and place where God resides. We begin this Eucharistic sacrifice, putting ourselves in God's presence, asking His forgiveness for our sins and humbly saying, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who manifest Your almighty power, above all, by pardoning and showing mercy, Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. So our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Can you sit for the reading? A reading from the book of Job. There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, 
that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And there came a messenger to Job and said, The oxen were ploughing and the donkeys feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them, and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The Chaldeans formed three groups and made a raid on the camels and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young people, and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response shall be, Lord, turn your ear to me, hear my words together. Lord, turn your ear to me, hear my words. O Lord, hear a cause that is just, pay heed to my cry. Turn your ear to my prayer, no deceit is on my lips. Your response? Lord, turn your ear to me, hear my words. From you may my justice come forth. Your eyes discern what is upright. Search my heart and visit me by night. Test me by fire and you will find no wrong in me. Your response? Lord, turn your ear to me, hear my words. To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. Display your merciful love. By your right hand you deliver from their foes those who put their trust in you. Your response? Lord, turn your ear to me, hear my words. Let us prepare our hearts for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, an argument arose among the disciples as to which of them was the greatest. But Jesus, knowing the reasoning of their hearts, took a child, put him by his side, and said to them, Whoever receives this child in my name 
receives me. Whoever receives me, receives him who sent me. For he who is least among all of you is the one who is greatest. John answered, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him, but he does not follow with us, because he does not follow with us. But Jesus said to him, Do not stop him, for the one who is not against you is for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, brothers and sisters, today and this week uh, we have readings from a new book of the Old Testament, the book of Job, also a wisdom book. We've just finished with Ecclesiastes and earlier we had Proverbs and today we begin the book of Job. And all of us have heard of the patience of Job, all of us I'm sure have heard of the story of Job, how he was uh, patient, that's what patience like Job. Uh, we had the beautiful narrative this morning from the very beginning of the book of Job. This book was written about 600 uh, before Christ. Uh, Job, as they say at the very beginning of the book, but not read to this morning, comes from little, little south of uh, Israel, Palestine. And so really not, not really an Israelite in that sense. And uh, a holy man, Job and uh, Noah and Daniel are uh, quoted later on also and as examples of holy men in other parts of the scripture. Uh, it's a whole story. This whole book, we'll have just a few readings from this book, is a story of uh, a person who has suffered a lot. We heard today's uh, first reading, he suffers uh, loss of his wealth, he suffers loss of all his uh, family, uh, and is sort of his disgrace, and uh, all one after another. And it's a test for him as we hear. Uh, this book is like poetry, like a narrative which is very, very uh, well written as far as literature is concerned, and it's very often also put in poetry. It's a reflection, the whole book is a reflection on suffering, suffering even of innocent persons. Now he was a very, very wealthy man, unusually wealthy. It's mentioned how many uh, thousands of camels he had and donkeys, etc. And uh, the, but uh, he was happy. And the stories or the this narrative here, which may or may not be historical, but it's a, a lesson to us. Uh, is a discussion between uh, God and uh, Satan. This does not happen. And the word Satan here it does not refer to Satan, what we call Lucifer or the devil. It's, uh, it's a common noun, the Satan. So it's a person uh, sort of uh, understood by all scriptures commentators as part of, uh, uh, it's, as I said, it's a fable. Uh, God's uh, group over there and uh, People, a person who's like a supervisor checking how people are on earth. That's what uh, like the story is. And uh, he tells God, now this you're praising Job very much, but that's because you have uh, protected him. You, you uh, gave him so much wealth, you've given happiness, and you take away all these good things and see how he'll curse you. And that's the test. And then uh, the story is that God says, this, okay, let's, let's see, but don't touch him. But let's see. Don't, don't harm him personally, but everything else you can do. And so he tries one by one, and we see the end. It's very edifying. Uh, he prostrates because his family, even his children are dead. The building crashed on them, uh, and, he, and he says, The Lord gave, and the Lord took away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And they con the comment over there that he did not do any harm. He was still the patient Job. Uh, the word used really uh, in, in uh, Hebrew and then in Greek is not exactly the way we understand patience now, but uh, steadfast, 
that would be the more accurate translation and in the uh, RSV uh, translation, the latest translations more accurate are always he's a steadfast man and that's what's used uh, also same word is used by James I think St. James in his epistle also speaks about Job but he calls him a steadfast, somebody who remains loyal to the Lord and the reflection for us really the message for us is what is the meaning of suffering how can an innocent man suffer the book goes ahead and we'll have uh, a few more readings from this in the coming days and uh, the it unfolds this the whole narrative unfolds in the form of a dialogue between job and three of his friends who come to uh, console him because he's suffering and then the, a debate of why uh, innocent people should suffer and then there's a reflection which is a message to all of us and uh, the, the book ends really the theme of the book is finally uh, we cannot fully understand God we can't fully understand uh, uh, wh why this is but we as a Christians know there is a redemptive value of suffering why did Jesus suffer the most innocent of all men and why do innocent people suffer a good person suddenly gets a serious illness a family suddenly has a big financial disaster uh, something happens in the home um, and things happen when you are still are trying to follow God uh, we will understand everything when we go to heaven but uh, God's ways are mysterious uh, but also we see a redemptive value in suffering the gospel itself is uh, again speaks that we should not seek honors the apostles and disciples had not yet got the message of Jesus not yet understood that his kingdom is not the kingdom of this earth for power uh, for prestige for wealth it's a way of uh, service and therefore Jesus gives an example and understands what they're discussing who should who's the greatest and and, and possibly uh, my friends the the context is, is this that Jesus had taken uh, Peter and James and John uh, to the mountain and he was transfigured there and there might have been a little jealousy uh, why did he take only these three and uh, said oh, I am more important and Peter Peter is always a leader and some others must have said I've got even some letters from you asking why was John not given more importance if John loved him so much uh, yes we don't know but God chooses and they were saying now which of us is more important who's who's going to be prime minister who's going to be finance minister who's going to be home minister in Jesus's kingdom uh, but uh, Jesus says this child little child unimportant uh, insignificant is the one really who's important never look for honors never look for uh, prestige serve 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 that's what uh, Jesus teaches us and one who understood this is a saint of today Saint Venceslaus we, we're not it's just a memorial he was the king in Czechoslovakia the Bohemians who ruled very well Christian principles and because of his faith because he was so much insisting on uh, making the kingdom run according to Christian principles he was killed regretfully by his own brother who wanted the throne but who was anti-Christian so St. Venceslaus was a model to us of really uh, consistently wanting to serve let's pray to St. Venceslaus today to help us to understand the meaning of service to understand also the meaning of what God wants to tell us in the scriptures God bless you Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread which we offer you. 
fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, with joy we proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Venceslaus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be coerced to eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let's pray to our Heavenly Father. In the very words Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins by the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let's offer the sign of peace. Christ be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, 
All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and in body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united, whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a lovely week, my dear brothers and sisters. Uh, once again, today is Monday, the beginning of the week. We have scripture, a little catechism on scripture, and that's uh, from Father Michael de Kuna. Uh, as many people are beginning to work, will gradually uh, probably diminish to make it possible also uh, the catechesis. I'll let you know uh, we probably will have it uh, from October every alternate day rather than every day. Now you also are busy and we try to see if we can shorten the prayers also or the catechesis, make it shorter. And uh, I was I asked you about the change of timing. There's so many uh, Forces. So many people are writing in. Even this morning, many have come. Uh, yesterday, so many have come in. Uh, I, 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 we won't change anything uh, till next Monday at least. And to give you an idea, uh, people, uh, there are several people who have written that they please change it to seven that we can hear mass before we go to work. Big numbers written saying that uh, we leave it to you really, and we won't mind helping. Uh, our friends and if they want to earlier fine but a big number has also written uh, two groups one is many people from abroad have written saying don't change the time and you'll make it inconvenient for us and also several old people have written now please allow us to sleep a little bit more and so precious for us so we, we want to come for the mass but then anyway, we will see uh, we we'll won't change at least at least till next monday won't change it uh, i'll let you know let's see all the when all come in i'll i'll study i'll, I'll give you the results of this little uh, ballot that we had anyway you have a lovely day lovely week and keep well god bless you pray for me i'll pray for you we pray now for relief from the coronavirus Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.